We are going to look at how you can find the center of the circle if you're given three of the points. Um, and so I've drawn a circle here based off of one of the examples from the handouts that I gave you guys. Um, so that way you have an example. So the three points in this circle are negative 7, 18, negative 11, 14, and negative 7, 10. So I wrote what we're going to do, given three points, write the equation of the circle. And then one other piece of information that you need to know. The perpendicular bisectors of two chords will meet at the center of the circle. So that's going to help us. Uh, and remember, a perpendicular bisector, you can write this down. Uh, it makes a right angle and intersects at the midpoint. So what I'm going to do is draw in the perpendicular bisectors of the two of the chords on this circle. So I'm going to pick the ones that go here, and I'm going to call this point A, and this one B, and this one C. I'm going to look at the one that goes from A to B, and I'm going to look at the one that goes from B to C. Those are the two I'm going to pick. You can pick any two. The other one would go from A to C. So I'm going to need the perpendicular bisectors of these points. Um, the, the, in order to do that, I'm looking at the midpoint of A to B here. And then I'm going to draw a perpendicular line that goes through it. So I'm going to sketch that midpoint, and then a perpendicular line that goes through it would go this way. And then from B to C here, if I do that, and then I draw, sometimes it might help you guys if you line it up so it's nice and flat. And then you can imagine a nice right angle going through that. And you can see that it is going to go through the center of the circle. So then the question is, well, how do you find out where that is? So the equations of these lines we can find because we know a point, which is the midpoint, and we know um, the slope because it's going to be perpendicular to this slope. So we're gonna, I'm going to find one of them, and then I'll uh, skip ahead and show you what the equation of the other one is, and then we'll go ahead and put that into the equation of a circle. So for the first one, when we do the equation of the perpendicular bisector to, we'll start with AB. We're going to need the slope, and we're going to need a point. So in order to find the slope, I'm going to need to find the slope of AB. The slope of AB I can find by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I end up with 4 over, and then 11 plus 7, which is 4. This comes out to 1. They're not always going to come out to really nice numbers, but I picked ones that are kind of nice for this beginning problem. Now, I need the perpendicular slope to AB. That is going to equal negative 1. Remember, negative reciprocal. I've got negative 1 over 1 here. The negative reciprocal of that is going to be negative 1 over 1. For the point here that we need to find, I'll do that in a different color. Uh, for the point that we need to do here, the point that we have is going to be the midpoint. If you look up here, the midpoint of this line we know is on this dotted line. So I'm going to find that midpoint. So in order to do the midpoint, we average the x and average the y. So that's going to be negative 7 plus negative 11 over 2. And then the y, which is 18 plus 14 over 2. When you do that, and you simplify it, negative 7, negative 11 is negative 18. Divide that by 2, you get negative 9. And then 18 plus 14 is 32 over 2 is 16. And then if you look at the picture, it makes sense. You know, negative 9, positive 16, that makes sense to be the midpoint that's up here. So i got to take these two things and create them and, create them and, and uh, put them into the equation of a line. So remember that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So I have a y, 16. I have a slope, which is negative 1. And I have an x, which is negative 9. All of these are on that line, plus b. So that means 16 is equal to 9 plus b. When you take away the 9, you end up with b equals 7, which means the equation of this line is y equals negative 1 x plus 7. Or you'd more commonly see that as y equals negative x plus 7. So that's the equation of one of the perpendicular bisectors. 
So I'm going to go up to the picture and show you what that is up there. So what we've just found is that the equation of this line here is y equals negative x plus 7. Now what I have to do is find the equation of this other line and find out where they intersect. So because I've just done the equation of the line here, and you should be able to follow along with that, I'm going to pause it, do the work, and then show it to you for a few seconds, and you can pause and check yourself. So now would be a great time to pause and go try and find the other equation of this perpendicular bisector, and then check your work in a minute. All right, so I just did the work for the other perpendicular bisector, and you can see that I get the equation of y equals x plus 21. So you can pause this here, check your work, make sure you did it right. Um, I even missed the negative at one point and had to go back and fix myself. So it's pretty easy to, to, to slip up here. So no worries if you did. Um, so check that now. Now, if you go up to your picture, you can see I've labeled the, the lines. I've got y equals negative x plus 7 here. It makes sense. The slope is negative. It's going down. Um, y equals x plus 21. The slope is going up. The y-intercept, yeah, it would be up here near 21. So it makes sense. So the next thing we need to do is solve this system of equations with our two lines. I need to know where they intersect. So I need to know where do y equals x plus 21 and y equals negative x plus 7 intersect. You've got two options. You can use substitution or elimination. Uh, graphing would be a little bit hard here because we're trying to avoid being inaccurate. So I'm going to use substitution. So I'm going to take these two and set them equal to each other. Um, I've got x plus 21 equals negative x plus 7. Again, I'm just substituting this one in for the y here. When I add this x over, I get 2x. When I subtract 21, I get negative 14, which means x equals negative 7. When you take this and you substitute it into one of your equations, um, you can plug it into any one of the ones you have. So I'm going to choose y equals x plus 21. So I get y equals negative 7 plus 21, which means y equals 14. So I've got the point negative 7, 14 is my solution. And if I go back over to my circle, this makes sense. Negative 7, 14 totally makes sense for the center of this circle. So I can write my equation of my circle or at least I can start to based off of that work here. If that was too fast, go back and, and check it out again. So the equation of a circle, remember, is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. And I can substitute in the things that I have. Remember, the h represents the center. The k represents the center. I'm leaving blanks here so I can substitute in the stuff that I need. So my x, I can plug in the negative 7. The y, I can plug in my 14. But I'm missing a radius. So that's the last thing I have to find. So the radius you can do using the distance formula. I can do the distance um, from the center to a point. So the distance from the center, which I already know, is negative 7. 14, I can pick any one of my three points. I'm going to choose um, negative 7, 10. So you should know how to use the distance formula. I'm going to pause it here and, and do it, and then you can check your work. So I just went ahead and did that. So you can see that I used the distance formula, x1 minus x2 squared, y2 minus, or y2, y1 minus y2 squared is out of the order because the negative is going to drop out anyway. Um, I end up with a radius of 4 which makes sense based off of the picture that I had. So I'm going to take that 4. I'm going to substitute it into this equation that I had for the circle right here. So I found my center. I found my radius. Looks like your final answer is going to be x plus 7 squared plus y minus 14 squared equals 16. So that's how you find the equation of the circle if you have three points. You find the center, you go ahead, find the radius, and then you can find your final equation.